Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we journey to the fog shrouded mountains through the cedar forest until we reach a school of sorcery and magic where young Historia and Amias will explore their newfound powers and their love for one another. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to unwind and find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. As we inch closer and closer to a night of restful sleep, you will gradually feel the weight of the day melt away from you, disappearing into the mattress beneath you and leaving you utterly calm and relaxed. With your eyes closed and your body in a comfortable position, allow your mind to wander and your creativity to blossom as you picture a starry night sky overhead. Mere feet above you, this cosmic wonder of a night sky is blanketing your ceiling. It is a cloudy haze of distant galaxies, nearby stars, of flickering planets at the far reaches of the solar system. If you reach up with your hand, you can touch this wonderful scene you have created. You drag your fingers through the purple, blue, black, gold, and pink haze. It's cool and thick to the touch, like trailing your fingers through a dense morning fog. But in that touch, in the coolness, there is magic. The magic of thousands of stars twinkling day in and day out. The magic of planets and stars and asteroids and galaxies doing their eternal dance, whether we are watching or not. This is your galaxy and your solar system to play in. And as you trail your fingers more through this cosmic cloud, you feel your fingertips brushing against stars and planets that waver and quiver under your touch. They're smooth and electric against your bare skin, something that both invigorates and soothes your soul. As you touch those planets and stars, they drift around like flecks of glitter in a puddle, always keeping a safe distance from one another. This display shifts and shimmers overhead, dancing and pulsing and swirling with such a breathtakingly ethereal energy that it makes a warmth spread through your whole body, starting at your heart and extending to the very fingertips that are twirling against those cosmic bodies. As you draw your fingers away, plucking them out of the planetary haze overhead. 
a new sense of peace washes over you. You watch the planets and stars spinning mere feet from your face for quite some time. It is, without a doubt, one of the world's most beautiful sights, and we are all part of it. Now that we have taken the time to unwind and find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now, let us begin our story. Rain trickled against the stained glass window pane beside his storia. Somehow, she felt as though she could feel every single drop, making its way over the cool glass, cascading down, 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 down into the flower beds far below, bouncing off the petals with the kind of joy and nourishment that only rain can provide. But Historia wasn't looking at the stunning display beside her. Her eyes were locked firmly on the book in her hands. Her fingers played with the frayed edges of the ancient pages, a nervous joy vibrating within them. She read the words aloud to herself once more in a whisper that tickled against her lips. Every sorcerer is born with a soulmate, their one true partner, the person they are destined to grow, love, and evolve with. Soulmates increase our magic and the magic of the world around us. Often, the first sign of encountering your soulmate is the presence of blue sparks, said to be leftover stardust from our very creation. Her mind drifted back to the sparks that had erupted between her and Amias just hours ago. The blue sparks that exploded into the air between their outstretched hands like their own private fireworks display, a display the universe had created just for them. And it wasn't just something she saw, it was something she felt. In that instant, as the blue embers flickered between them and sailed through the air, she felt something tugging at her heart. It was as though a silk string was being tied deep inside her chest, an unbreakable string. She could feel that string stretching to Amias across from her, nestling itself into his chest and tying itself there. There was no denying that they were connected, no denying that they were soulmates. It sent a shiver down Historia's spine, not a shiver of fear, nor anxiety or regret, but a shiver of realization. From this point on, her life would never be the same again. From this point on, she was tied to this man that she had only met a few hours ago. And that didn't scare her. She was almost surprised by how little it scared her. 
But the moment she spoke with Amias, the moment she looked into his sky blue eyes, she felt something she had never felt before. The connection. That sense of home that she had been desperately missing for the majority of her life. A few rooms down and across the hall, Amias was feeling the exact same way. He held the same exact book in his lap as he sat cross-legged on the bed, the rain lashing at the window just behind his head. He traced his finger over the passage one more time, wanting to be certain that he was, indeed, reading it correctly. He read the words aloud to himself in a soft whisper, so quiet he could scarcely hear it himself. Every sorcerer is born with a soulmate, their one true partner, the person they are destined to grow love, and evolve with. Soulmates increase our magic and the magic of the world around us. Often, the first sign of encountering your soulmate is the presence of blue sparks, said to be leftover stardust from our very creation. He balled his hands together for a moment. He swore he could still feel the warmth of the sparks that had exploded from his palm and his fingertips. He could feel the energy within each and every ember, the promise that each of them represented. And he could feel that silk string inside his chest now, it wasn't an uncomfortable feeling, nor a limiting one. It was as though all his life he had been a ship in a harbor with an eternal storm floating listlessly and alone across the turbulent sea. And this string, this string was the anchor that he didn't know he needed. He set the book aside and reached for the warm chamomile tea on his nightstand. He breathed in the steam, relishing the comfort and soothing fragrance that it provided. Tomorrow was going to be a completely different day. Classes would begin their introductions to magic, and then, once classes were finished, it was time for the festival. The festival of the celestial gift. It was something that he heard students talking about when he was on his way to the school, before he met Historia. It was the kind of festival that shows you how incredible it is to be a magic practitioner, how life-changing and beautiful it can truly be. Because during this festival, the entire campus was decked out in celestial motifs. Many moons crafted by magic dangled from the trees and the courtyards. Pastries and sandwiches and sweets, shaped like stars and the moon in all phases, were laid out on every navy-colored silk cloth table. The tables and pathways themselves were dusted with actual stardust that glistened in the moonlight, stardust that reminded every student of where they and their magic came from. But the decorations and sweets 
were only half of the magic of the event. When the moon rose to the highest point in the sky, then the real magic would begin. It was called the Festival of the Celestial Gift for a good reason. Long, long ago, magic descended from the heavens in glowing balls of light. This celestial power crashed into the arms of ordinary people below, giving them the power of the stars and the moon. These people became the first magicians. Students told Amias that during the festival, the celestial orbs would cascade down, 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 down from the sky overhead, landing in the arms of students who were lucky enough to catch them below. If you were lucky enough to catch a celestial orb, you could keep it for life as a reminder of your magic and something that strengthened it. It was an activity that soulmates did together every year. After all, having a soulmate is what increases your magic in the first place, what allows all magic users to be their fullest self. And now, Amias and Historia were going to be able to do that together. But first, they had classes. The following morning, both Historia and Amias got ready in front of the beautiful ancient mirrors that were tucked into the corners of their rooms. They buzzed with anticipation as they put on the clothes of the festival of the celestial gift. All white outfits dotted with silver and blue embroidered stars. The garments themselves seemed to carry a powerful magic, a reminder of all the magic users who came before, and all the magic users who would come after. When Historia stepped out of her room, she was hardly surprised to see Amias leaning on the doorframe, waiting with a smile on his face. He teased her, asking if his soulmate would always be the kind to be fashionably late. Historia blushed at the word soulmate, the first time it had been exchanged between the two of them. With a playful smile, she asked if her soulmate would always be so impatient. They meandered down the massive, regal mahogany staircase to their first class. All first-year students had the pleasure of studying the exact same classes with one another. It was a chance to grow with one another, to learn, to evolve as magic users over time. As they turned a corner, they were delighted to see Lumen leaping through the hallway. The leaping lamppost had a joyful spring in his hops, a whimsical energy that brought smiles to their faces. Historia curtsied to Lumen, who dipped down to her, bowing as much as he was able. With that, he continued springing down the hall, off to wrangle students and guide them where they needed to go. Historia and Amias sat in their first class, side by side, and it was then that they realized they weren't alone. 
Several other students were sitting next to one another with a new kind of aura around them. It appeared that there were several soulmates already in this class, something that would only prove to strengthen the group more and more. The professor began her lesson as Historia and Amias looked on in awe. She showed the students some basic powers. At one point, she outstretched one of her fingers with grace and poise, before twirling it with extreme precision and causing a portal to blip to existence from nowhere. The portal glowed a calm, ethereal sage green. Embers sparked off the spinning edges of the portal as it grew larger and larger and larger and larger. On the other side, the students could see a world of green and gold, a magical world of patterns and colors and shapes that took their breath away. It was a place where magic users went to study, the teacher explained. A place that they would be able to enter in time, as long as they worked hard on their studies. Then, the teacher showed them even more beautiful things that can be created with magic. She outstretched her hand, sending blue sparks flying from her palm. Historia and Amias exchanged a surprised look. They looked just like the sparks they had exchanged the day before. But this time, sparks gradually formed into the shape of a phoenix. It was transparent, a gossamer, but unmistakably a phoenix. It zipped overhead, leaving a haze of blue and white in its wake. The students could feel the air and magic rushing over them as it flitted overhead. Then it returned to the teacher shrinking and disappearing into the palm of her hand. With a smile and in a gentle tone, she explained that that was the gift of the soulmate. Every pair empowers one another and provides the other with a companion to keep them company and protect them in their absence. It was at this point that Historia felt Amias's hand brush over hers in excitement and wonder. They were soulmates, and even when they weren't together, they would carry a piece of one another with them, always. The next few classes were just as magical and inviting. Every teacher showed them the potential of their powers, reminding them that these powers took great strength and understanding to use well. But neither Amias nor Historia were intimidated by this. They felt safe, excited to face the bright future ahead of them. Before they knew it, the morning classes were over, and the festival for the celestial gift was being prepared. But before the festivities began, they had some time to connect with one another and center themselves in this new world they saw glimpses of. They sat down underneath a breathtaking willow tree on school grounds. Its tendrils were peppered with white and purple flowers. 
a result of the magic on campus. Amius reached forward, gently parting the willow tendrils, and revealed a stunning little escape underneath their shelter. There was a soft wool blanket laid out at the base of the tree, and around that blanket, piles and piles of rich, cerulean, sleek silver, and warm gold pillows, all plush and inviting to the touch. It was a private oasis within the beautiful chaos that was their campus. Amias and Historia settled down on the blanket, leaning against the pillows and the sturdy trunk with a relaxed sigh. Their fingers intertwined as the muscles in their bodies unwound, and they sunk into the ground for an instant. Merely brushing hands with one another seemed to drain every bit of tension or exhaustion from them, grounding them and reminding them of what was truly important. With their eyes closed, they simply listened to the sound of the willow tendrils blowing in the breeze. The leaves swayed side to side, side to side, side to side, side to side, rustling against one another and sending a fragrant aroma spiraling into the air. Amias squeezed Historia's hand with a warm smile. He opened a wicker picnic basket he had brought along, revealing the delightful lunch that he had tucked inside. He pulled out small sandwiches, a steaming stew, and plenty of vegetables for them to munch on together. They were side by side, laughing and telling stories to one another like they were old friends. It was strange, really, how connected they felt, even though they met just days ago. There was no awkwardness, no uncertainty. Every word that came out of their mouth, every action, every glance and look that they gave one another was entirely authentic. They could be their truest selves with one another in a way that they had previously only been in their own company and it filled them with a sense of complete freedom. They sat beneath that willow tree for several hours, simply savoring each other's company. On occasion, Amias would brush a stray hair out of Historia's face, and Historia would reach up and plant a gentle kiss on Amias's cheekbone or forehead. Each moment felt tender and true. Before they knew it, the festival was ready. Amias helped Historia up from their comfortable little oasis, and they re-emerged into the world from their private cocoon. By now, the moon was high overhead, painting the landscape in a silvery, magical sheen that invigorated Amias and Historia, but also left them with a feeling of utter peace. Students skipped through the streets in their beautiful celestial clothes, plucking sweets out of booths and munching on them as they wandered through this beautiful celestial wonderland. The decorations overhead enhanced by magic, were otherworldly. The moon decorations were not something you would find at a furniture store. 
it looked as though the moons had actually been shrunk down to fit in the palm of your hand. They hovered in the air overhead, spinning on an axis in between leaves and against the dark night sky. Music filled the courtyard and walkways, the sounds of a fiddle, a flute, and a harp were particularly disarming and soul-stirring, reminding everyone that this was an event of celebration, a time to truly embrace and enjoy being alive. Amias and Historia skipped through this wonderland hand in hand. They picked up sugary dough in the shape of stars and bit into it, reveling at the sweet taste and the fragrant steam that drifted up into the night air with every bite they took. They sipped warm drinks that were blue, silver, and gold, all of which looked more like art pieces than something you could actually drink. The tops of the toasty beverages were blanketed in layers of fluffy, whipped cream, dusted with mini stars and planets made of pure sugar. As they sipped the drinks that tasted of chocolate or coconut or strawberry, they couldn't help but smile at one another. The joy in the air and the love in the food was absolutely undeniable. It filled them both with exaltation. In the center of the courtyard, underneath strings of stars and spinning planets and moons, a dance began. Traditional fiddle music played seemingly by itself as floating instruments drifted around the edges of the courtyard. Historia was not much of a dancer. She had never been able to find or enjoy the rhythm of music. But when Amias extended his hand to her, his crystal blue eyes sparkling against the glowing light of the decorations, she knew she had to accept. He wrapped his arm around the small of her waist, drawing her closer with a look of absolute adoration shining in his eyes. She placed a hand on his chest, calmed and touched by the feeling of his heartbeat thrum, 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 thrumming underneath her fingertips. Then they began to sway with the music. They drifted over the cobblestones as if the music was made for them, or so they thought. Other students gave them confused glances and gave one another knowing smirks. And yet, Amias danced faster swinging Historia across the dance floor with a smile plastered on his face. I see you aren't a good dancer either, Historia murmured, a playful glint in her upturned gaze. Amias chuckled, his voice honey smooth. I suppose we are soulmates after all, my dear. Unbothered, the two continued to dance over several tunes. For once, neither Historia nor Amias cared that they were perhaps the worst dancers the world had ever seen. They giggled and laughed and smiled with one another, drifting around without a care in the world as the music swelled around them. No one else on the dance floor mattered. In fact, nothing else in the world mattered at that moment, except for the time that they were sharing with one another. Soon, the music slowed down, 
Tired and exhilarated, the two gave each other a silly bow and made their way off the dance floor, exchanging giggles as they wrapped their arms around each other. It was then that they both really realized for the first time that this was not just a romantic connection. It was a deep, powerful friendship that they shared. A friendship unlike any other they had ever had before. By then, most of the students were filing out of the school compound and into the forest. There was a meadow, the moonlit meadow, where the catching of the celestial gifts occurred every single year. So, the two began their long journey with the others out of the school. As they left the school gates and descended down the hillside, the stars overhead seemed to grow brighter and brighter. The wilderness around them seemed to be alive. The full moon hanging high and heavy overhead painted the landscape with a brilliant silvery glow, illuminating the forest in a way that only highlighted its immense beauty. Every leaf looked as though it was flaked with bits of the moon, and every drop of dew had the heavens reflected in it. Neither Amias nor Historia exchanged a word as they meandered through the thick forest, taking in the breathtaking environment with their hands intertwined. Their hearts seemed to beat in tandem now, their warm breath misting in the cool night air. They crested over one final hill in the mountains, and the vista before them stopped them both in their tracks. They reached the moonlit meadow, and it certainly lived up to its name. The sweet grass stretched as far as the eye could see, all the way to the foothills of the brilliant blue mountains on the other side of the valley. Each and every blade seemed to be infused with the energy of the stars and moon overhead. The grass swayed in the gentle breeze, looking more like ebbing and flowing ocean waves than grass. They waded into the grass, gazing up at the sky in absolute wonder. Here, the sky seemed so close that it felt as though they could reach out and touch it as though they could brush their fingers through the Milky Way. Amias tore his gaze away from the sky to steal a look at Historia beside him. The vista was reflected in her eyes that were brimming with delight and wonder. Her lips hung slightly ajar, the edges upturned in awe. The breeze blew gently through her hair, rippling it in the fragrant breeze. Amias held her hand a little tighter, transfixed by her even more than he had been the moment he met her. He was so bewitched by her that he wouldn't have noticed the celestial gifts had they not illuminated her face in a mosaic of colors. The celestial orbs fell from the sky with ethereal grace and beauty. They had appeared in the inky black sky among the stars. A collection of stardust and energy and magic they seemed to move in slow motion as they sailed toward the ground. The orbs were a stunning array of colors. 
They seemed to be every color all at once. Purple, yellow, pink, blue, orange. Like a million fireworks, all held together by the force of the heavens. Historia and Amias watched them one after the other as students around the field caught celestial orbs in their arms. Every time they caught them, they would spark, sending a rainbow of embers into the air and the cool grass around them. They landed with an otherworldly ting, 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 ting across the field. The angelic sound rippling through the canyon and echoing off the walls. And then, Amias and Historia felt something rather strange. There was an energy drawing their attention to the sky, almost as though it was calling out their names. A celestial orb drifted toward them, leaving that incandescent trail in its wake. There was that undeniable connection between them and the orb, almost as undeniable as the connection between the two of them. They stepped forward, transfixed by it, drawn to it by magic. In unison, they extended their arms to catch it, weaving their arms together. Time seemed to have stopped for an instant, and then, ting, the colors cascaded from the orb as it landed in their arms sending a wave of warmth over both of their bodies. They gazed at the orb they held for quite some time. It wavered in their grasp, a living, breathing, cosmic, magical wonder. When they brought their arms back, it hovered in the air beside them all by itself, whirling in a gentle drone. Amias took two necklaces from his pocket, two clear lockets made to serve as vessels for the celestial orb. There was no telling if the orb would actually meld with the locket and stay with them, but they were both hopeful. Softly, they each opened a locket, offering it to the orb, and, to their delight and awe, the orb shrunk down and split into two, heading into each side of the locket. They gently shut the lockets, feeling the power of the celestial orb within them. Amia slid Historia's necklace around her neck, laying it softly against her chest, against her heart. Historia did the same with Amias's necklace, and, together, they felt a sense of connection and belonging stronger than anything they had felt before. They walked back to the castle in silence, holding one another close. The sounds of the crickets and frogs filled the night air. And in the far distance, they could still hear the faint ting, 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 ting of celestial orbs meeting their humans. When they finally arrived back at their dorms, they smiled at one another 
with nothing but respect and admiration. Amias drew Historia close, kissing her on the lips. As they embraced, they could feel their necklaces pulse. Their soulmate and their celestial orb forever intertwined. I hope you have enjoyed this story and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>